Light and Optics – Applications of Light The eye. It's the simplest optical instrument. It consists of a lens and the retina. In order to extend the eye's natural capacity, we use artificial means, such as magnifying glasses, microscopes and telescopes. Lenses play an important role in all of them. The most important types of lenses are convex and concave lenses. A convex or collecting lens bulges in the middle, which allows it to collect rays as they pass through it at its focal point. This type of lens magnifies objects. It's often used in magnifying glasses and cameras. A concave or dispersing lens is thinner in the middle than at its edge. Light rays that pass through the lens are dispersed at the other side. This type of lens creates a scaled-down image of the object. Very often both lens types are used together in combination in optical devices. Telescopes refract light rays to increase the angle of sight of faraway objects, thereby expanding their apparent size. The oldest telescope, the Galileo telescope, incorporates a large convex lens with a small curvature that functions to capture the image and a small concave lens with a bigger curvature as the eyepiece. The convex lens creates an intermediate image that passes through the concave lens to the eye behind it, where the image is projected onto the retina. Galileo's first telescope achieved a magnification of just three times that of the naked eye. To examine very small objects, we use microscopes. Light microscopes, however, have resolution barriers. According to Ernst Abbe's research, a magnification of 20,000 times is the limit, past which two adjacent points can no longer be distinguished from each other. Nevertheless, modern light microscopy has managed to achieve resolutions beyond Abbe's diffraction limit. In 2014, Stefan Hell, along with Eric Betzig and William E. Murner, were honored for their discoveries in this area. We may change the fact that the molecules that are all flooded with light, with excitation light, are in the end capable of producing light at a detector. So in other words, if you manage to place these molecules here in a state in which they are not capable of producing light at the detector, then I can separate those that can from those that can't. 